Resource is the hardest trick in the game, in my opinion. For consistency, it's the hardest in my... One of the hardest. Top three, I would say. Easily. Top three hardest trick that is pretty common. Because I don't include Toxic Maze BLJ in that. Because Toxic Maze BLJ for me isn't common enough to call it a proper RTA trick. But Breezeless is definitely prop common enough that it's a it's a pretty common RTA trick. And for me, it's probably the hardest consistency-wise as an RTA trick. This stage got so much harder with the slight optimizations that I implemented in 2021. This one star got so much harder, but it got more than a second faster so it's it's worth it but god it's so much harder now this star has been fucking me over i used to be so good at the star and now my mom becomes my dad all right speed run lovers it's been a while since i've speed run mario time to wear my gaming glasses oh yes training christmas is the best Speedrun lover. I benched 115 pounds yesterday. Holy shit, man. I have no idea what that means. I don't know if that's good or bad, but congrats. I know you shouldn't ask those questions, but when you used to stream only Warzone in most of 2020, did you struggle with money back then? Like, didn't you have a lot of money because you were streaming Warzone too much? He basically asked the question twice, but um, I was making way less money. Yes, <laughs> obviously. I was getting a tenth of viewership that I would get. Of course I was making a lot less money, but I got I had so much fun with Warzone, and to be honest, the reason why I don't regret playing so much Warzone, I met a lot of really awesome friends. I have a lot of close, cool, awesome friends that I'm actually excited to meet in real life now because of Warzone. People like Legendary and Chubb and Ashek and Cookie Boy and Sodzax and... I'm really excited to meet them in real life now. We even talked about like rooming together at Gamescom and, and all these places. Just so we can meet each other, you know? And that all happened because of Warzone. So of course, I mean, the money sucked ass. But at the time, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I need a break from speedrunning. It was six years. I needed... I realized after Break the Record 2020... After my huge success at Break the Record, like, you know, I fucking won $10,000, $12,000 in a speedrunning tournament. It was awesome. After that, I realized, I think I need a big break. I need, I think I need my official big break from speedrunning. So I just, you know, why not? Fuck it. Just might as well stream Warzone. And I met a lot of awesome people that I want to meet now. Je suis français. C'est très difficile speedrunning. Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> yep. Well, I have to say, oui, oui. We, oui. very we. Oui. How do you say it's true in French? C'est vrai? C'est... Is it, is it vrai? I can't remember. I studied five, five years of French in high school, guys. Even though it was like seven years ago. I studied five years of high school. French in high school and... Yep. I... I forgot how to speak it. <laughs> this is why learning a language in a class is just not the same. I could speak fluent Spanish from five years of just being in Spain, and I speak fluently Spanish. But five years of studying French in a class, I can't even speak it. And I don't understand most of it. That's the main difference. If you want to learn a language, like actually learn a language, oh my God! literally dump yourself into a country that speaks a language and suffer for like six months. I guarantee you, you'll be speaking perfectly in like fucking six months to a year. It's the best way. Or you can do the easy route and just watch television in that language with subtitles. Did I seriously just miss that red coin? Do like the Scandinavians do and a lot of other Europeans. Just watch television in English and put subtitles of your language. That's the best way. Like when I speak to a lot of Scandinavian people, they all speak English. I When I went to Copenhagen and I did it like a show with Disney XD or whatever, Dude, every one of them spoke perfect English and they literally all said, we just grew up watching television in English. And just like that, they know how to speak English. If you want to learn German, don't go to Germany. The problem is, is I think a lot of people in different countries want to learn English, so they want to reply in English because it makes them feel better. I've had some experiences when some Spanish people have spoken English to me when I was still learning Spanish. 
even though I didn't want them to, because they feel good that they could reply in, Spanish, in English because they learn from it and it makes them feel better. They don't realize that I don't want them to speak English to me. I do think it's okay though, where what is beneficial is that if they speak to me English back, I would just speak to them in Spanish. So it's like, okay, I'll let you speak to me in English, but I will speak to you in Spanish. So at least you're having the practice. The most important thing in learning a language is that you are practicing speaking. It's not as important to be spoken to in that language as it is to actually speak it yourself. Because 99.9% .9 of cases of people that learn languages, it's always easier for you to understand the language than to speak it. That's just natural. Everyone says the same thing because it just makes sense. Like you can hear somebody say something in Spanish if you're trying to learn Spanish and you're like, fuck, I know exactly what they said, but I don't know how to reply. That's the case for 99.9% .9 of people. It's normal. So the most important is that you are actually practicing speaking. I remember being shocked when you cried before ripping your shirt. I didn't cry. I did not cry, Aqua. Can you imagine if I did? Crying. I was whining like a baby. That's, that's for sure. I became a baby for about five seconds. I don't even remember that. That's the funny thing. I don't remember what happened before the actual shirt rip. I don't remember anything I said. So every time I watch it, I'm like, I don't remember that shit. All I remember is actually ripping my shirt. All I remember is actually reaching to the point of ripping my shirt. And then after I ripped it, like realizing what I did and then what happened. I was so angry that I just lost my mind. I don't even remember what happened before I ripped my shirt. Who's the worst companion in your opinion? What do you mean by companion? Like in Zelda, Link's guide? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm not sure I'd follow. I don't think I'd follow whatsoever. I don't- I haven't played enough Zelda games to know. I've only really played Ocarina of Time. I played Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and, Win and uh, Majora's Mask. Those are the only other Zelda games I've played. And I haven't even beaten them. I beat like the first dungeons and then just stopped playing. I mean, probably Navi, because all Navi does is shout hey and listen. That's really not that much help, in my opinion. Hey! Hey what? Say something. Listen! What do you want, idiot? So you could say hey again? The girl in Jabu Jabu? Oh god, she's the worst, yes. Rudo is a cunt. Escúchame, cara de verga, is what she says in Spanish. <laughs> right. Cara de verga. Cockface. That's what that means. Don't sniff sugar. Nice name. Can you... What would, Oh, God. We just instantly get diabetes if you sniff sugar. Would you go insane? All right, Cox. You better listen to me. We have some shit to do. What? I'm taking the chickens back to their master. Wait, that's a bad thing. <laughs> that's actually a bad thing. They're probably gonna get, you know, murdered. <laughs> yep. Yep, Cox. Literally. You know, because they're chickens. I'm funny. Mario was very naughty tonight. I don't know why he wasn't listening, man. It's actually fucking crazy, like, how hard it is to get runs going in Mario. Like, I played an hour and a half of Mario maybe today, and Jesus Christ, man. One run to JRB. Well, one run past JRB. I just, ah, Jesus. The hardest thing ever is just to get past Womps. At least I can get, like, the, into the first 10 minutes of Zelda, you know? Like, without resetting m almost every single time. Do you think the 120 star world record is beatable? Do you think it's also insane? Yes. What the hell just happened? The answer is yes to both of those questions. No world record is unbeatable. That's not a thing. If a human could get it, a human could beat it. That's part of just being human beings. Human beings are not tasks for a reason. He was on the ch he was stuck on the invisible chest. Oh my god. Let me go. This is like the most annoying thing in the history of Zelda Get off of my face. Yeah, that boss is unnecessarily scary I don't know why they made it so like fucked up and you have to fight two of them as well. It's been seven years race and You can't really play seven years of Mario 64 without trying something else it because Mario 64 is a game that doesn't change because it's too linear so there's no routing ability, you know, so Mario would always be the exact same experience. The only thing that makes it, gets, makes it exciting is getting new PVs and world records, you know, competition. 
But Zelda games do have a lot of routing and changes and glitches and because they're open world games and they have much more opportunities. It's, this game is still always changing. You know, it's always another reason to play it and to, you know. That's why people like ZFG and shit still play Ocarina of Time after 12 years of playing the game. Yeah, most people don't think about it this way because they're stupid. I'm kidding. Because because it's it's hard to understand. If you're not a speedrunner yourself, it's hard to understand like the difference between linear games and open world games and routing and because Mario games are very linear. You know, if you think about it, all of Mario 64 is based in one castle. The only routing there is in a game like Mario is going into paintings in an order and grabbing the stars. In some games, you have to grab the stars in the order as well that they, let, that they tell you. So there's not a lot of routing ability. The only routing ability that you have is the actual stars. And stars only have so much routing ability as well. Like the infamous, you know, SSL Reds star, for example, is a huge, very open world sort of star. So that has had a lot of changes, but there's not a lot of stars like that. One thing I would say though, is that because Mario doesn't have a lot of routing changes, it, a lot of optimization has really been focused in a game like Mario 64. But for example, what does lack quite a bit in a game like Ocarina Time is the optimization because a lot of focus is only put on the actual routing and um, glitch hunting. So there's a lot of possibility for extra optimizations, I think, in a game like Ocarina Time, which excites me because I'm all about optimization because I've, I came from Mario. What is what is also nice about Ocarina of Time is that I could sit right now with my legs crossed and one hand rested on my armrest and play this game. I can't do that with Mario. I could sit casually and play this and still speedrun this game. I can't sit like this and play Mario. I have to be like super focused and sit in certain positions. Not to say this game is easy by any means, of course not. But a lot of times you can kind of be more relaxed. It's nice being able to speedrun a game where I could be relaxed a lot of the time and not have to be super, super, super fucking focused and try hard. If I ever streamed with face cam, you would see me jump up when I'm doing a Bowser throw. I could see that. You don't see it, but every time I do Owlus, I actually move the controller like like this to get in the cage because I'm like, uh, please get in. I actually move my hand. <laughs> oh my God, same. That's so funny. I add like a boomer. I like the old, I add like the old boomers, like my parents when they play video games and they move their entire hand instead of the controller. i never forget my stepdad playing nin my Nintendo GameCube growing up. And he would play games like Need for Speed and shit. And he would, every time he has to turn the car, he would turn his entire fucking arm like this. And I'm like, turn the joystick, not your hand. This is not, you're not using a fucking steering wheel, bro. This is a GameCube.